we were working on my truck. This is the one I bought off an auction. It was an old railroad truck and fixed it up and made a decent truck out of it. So the biggest issue with it is rust. So right now I'm rocking the uh, foam filled cab corners. So I need to clean that up, put a little body filler over it, and paint that white. The bed, it's pretty much shot. It is unfortunate because I, I like how this bed set up, but as you can see, these doors are about gone. And when I fixed this up, it was either last year or the year before. I think it was the year before, actually. Um, I kind of polished these up, got rid of some rust, and made it look presentable, but drive it through the winter and then it looks like this so I got that other service body off of that $400 truck I bought I'm wanting to put it on here so I need to get this bed off do a little work on this cab corner this door has a hole in it so we'll have to get uh, creative with that I don't know if I'll fiberglass that or what. I ain't decided yet. I need to change the hydro boost on the brake. It's leaking uh, power steering fluid pretty good. So I need to change it. I'm going to put a new brake master cylinder on it so I can put the factory trailer brake on here. And that's pretty much the gist of it. So I'm wanting to pull this inside the garage so I don't have to lay on the wet gravel to get this bed unbolted but in order to do that this box is too tall to fit in the door so I'm gonna cut it down so I can get it inside and I wish this bed wasn't so rusty I would like to keep it because it's got this locking cover that also slides back so you still got a bed but you can put stuff in there it's dry and you can lock it which is nice so let's see if we can cut this box off get it inside and get this bed pulled off.
gonna get a big hammer because that should come off the hook. Okay, y'all didn't miss much. I got the bolts out of the bed, the fuel fill unhooked, and the wiring unhooked. So now it's loose. That was kind of a pain, but I mean, it was just four bolts. They all had to be torch cut. And this one right up here, the fuel, to do it right, you'd have to drop the fuel tank to actually get to that one, but I wasn't doing that. So I cut an access hole in that and made it happen. So let's get this thing outside and see if we can set this back. That went a lot smoother than the other one we took off probably because I drilled some holes so I had a good spot to rig it at it was actually balanced so anyways I'm gonna get this one out of the way and I'm gonna bring over the one that we're putting on here and just do some measurements and stuff I'm not I'm not gonna try and put it on today I want to work on these cab corners and stuff a little bit so but yeah I went ahead and pressure washed the frame. I should probably put some paint on this, but it's not really warm enough. So I don't know. I mean, it. I don't know how long this truck has left of the world. To be honest, I don't know if I want to invest that time to sand all that down and paint it.
But right here, originally it had hydraulic tanks mounted here in the bed to run hydraulic tools or whatever. But where they leaked oil, this section here on both sides is just factory clean, factory paint and everything. That's pretty funny. Base. I'm going to get this out of the way and bring that other one over here. Here is going to be the new bed, or new to me bed. So i got a little bit of work to do to it. This bumper was bent up when I got it. People got upset in the last video because I bent the tailgate. It was already bent. Plus I like the one off the other bed better because it you don't have to put clips in it. It just latches like a normal pickup tailgate. And this door's dented. Other than that, this box is really nice. I guess just a little surface rust. That ain't nothing. It's really solid. Nice. Um, the truck it was on was a cabin chassis truck. Meaning the frame rails were more narrow and flat. This truck was set up as a pickup. So it's got the little arch in the frame. And the frame rails are wider. Easiest way to tell if you were working on one of these or look under it is on a cabin chassis truck these shocks will be on the same side of the axle like on a pickup one's back here one's up like one's on the front one's on the back on cabin chassis truck they'll both be in the same spot like they'll both be in the front of the axle or the back depending on that's an easy way to tell and the frame will be more narrow and flat and usually it's I think 56 cab to axle and then a pickup is 54 I think could be telling you the wrong numbers but it's something like that so I got a few inches that's gonna be off center I'm hoping I can get it super tight against the cab to where the center of the wheel well is not too too far off I don't care if it's off a little bit but not real far off And then I think these boxes are wider, so I'll have to notch them out for the springs because on a cabin chassis truck where the frame's narrow, the springs sit in farther so you got more room. So I may have to notch them where they hit on these springs. I'll pull a tape measure in a little bit and figure all that up. Then there's a bunch of random angle and stuff that's welded on this thing. I don't want to get off and just stuff. Might try and pop that den out. I don't think I ever could get this door unlatched. And one thing I do like about this box is this thing slides back and locks all three doors. So even though they have a lock on here, you can put a padlock right here, unlock that, pull it, and you have access to all three doors. So that's nice. You can put a combination lock. You don't have to have your keys with you and pull it. That's that's a nice feature. It's got a piece of conveyor belt in here as a floor, which actually that might be pretty nice to have. I gotta get this cleaned out and stuff, but and the fuel fill on mine's up here. Again, I may have to notch out this box, depending on how that runs. Uh, let's see it over there. I can pull a tape measure and see. Then it's got a hitch for this box, but we won't be using that. I want to retain my factory hitch. So where this bed is a foot longer, it's a nine foot bed. It'll sit where the bumper sit on the old one. So I'll probably have to do like they done and put a V in it to have room to have the hitch in. But that's not a big deal. Then I'll put my bumper on here, probably modify it to work. Yeah, so got quite a bit of work to do this and a little bit of work due to the truck before this goes on. So I'm going to get to probably working on the truck. Okay, I'm sure the auto body guys will love me for this. But basically, cab corner didn't exist. I filled it full of this expanding foam, which this is not a temporary, this is not a long term repair, nor will it last very long. But I don't know how much longer this truck has to the world. So I didn't want to buy cab corners and stuff. So basically all I'm going to do is cut this part off. 
and then I might kind of try and sand some of this area down and get a little smoother and shoot some white paint on it and be done with it. That's all I'm doing. Southway. And then you can just cut it however your heart desires. Alright, here's what I came up with. This is a piece of scrap sheet metal. Just bend a lip on the edge of it. Put that there and then I'll just take some pliers or a hammer and bend that bottom around. And yeah, there's nothing really to it. I'm just going to line this up. Some professional auto body here. I even got the claw hammer and everything. It needs to be something like that. I hate this welder.
I know what you're thinking. That that right there doesn't look very good. And I, I would agree. So let's. Looky there. I mean, you can't even tell that was done. Like, I mean, you could take this thing to like a car show or something. All right. Okay, I got what little bit I want to do to this done. So, I'm gonna get it out of here and see if I'm bringing up bed in here and work on it since it's snowing outside. And we'll pick back up then.
right, got the bumper and the hitch and everything off. Uh, that still needs to come off, but for the most part, we got about everything we need off of here. So now what I'm wanting to do is I bought some of these D-rings from Harbor Freight, and I'm wanting to weld these on here. One, once a, it's on the truck, that'll be a good tie-down hook, like if you're hauling tall stuff. But the main reason I want them is they'll make really good rigging points to pick this thing up. So I got six of them. I might wait and weld these on this center one on later, but I'm wanting one in each corner of the back so I can pick this thing up easier. And that'll make it a lot easier to handle because we got to flip this thing up and do some cutting on it and whatnot. I might just flip it upside down. But anyways, I'm going to go ahead and get all these welded on here and get this thing outside. Okay, got this marked out. So what I'm cutting out for is where the frames are wider, the spring purchase sit out farther. So I've got to cut out this square here. You can see where I have it marked out. So rather than cut the whole box, I'm just going to cut where I need to. And that will allow that to set in. So the springs will have plenty of room. I think I left an extra quarter or half inch over so they'll have room. And I'm not going to lose that much box space over it. So it'll be good. I'll cut that, cut these off. I don't think I need those because the frame will be out beside it anyways. Yeah, so I got to do that. Then I got to do these back boxes. This is the front of the bed. This is back. I got to do these back ones. I might try and lay this thing down on its top. That would probably make it easier. But anyways, I'm going to get the plasma cutter out and get these cut out. And we'll go from there.
Okay, got these boxes all cut out and everything ready. So now what I want to do is set it on the truck and see how everything actually lines up physically on the truck. My measurements say it should work, but let's physically set it on there. So I'm going to get this thing flipped back upright, get the machine positioned where I can get it up in the air and back the truck under it is the plan. So let's get this thing flipped back down. Put you all somewhere here. I guess that's safe sitting there. I'm gonna go get the truck. Had to trim up the boxes. I was off on my front measurement. So we're going to try and set this on again. I know it's dark probably.
dollars. Right. Well, the bed is physically on here. Let me see if I can get this light where y'all can see. Actually, I got that center wheel well about perfect. Well done. Normally, there's a gap, like probably about that big in between the cab and the box. But I tucked it up almost as tight as you can get it. I mean, I still get my hand there, so there's room for it to flex. But I had to do that to make up a couple inch difference. But it actually sits nice under here. It, the front supports are on the frame there, and then the rear supports are on the frame there. So it's kind of hard to see, but the back end does sit up a little bit. I don't think the bed is like tweaked. I think it's just that's how high the back end of the truck rides. I'm pretty sure. Center of the wheel well I mean it might be a little bit that way but I mean that's not bad this bed the whole thing needs to come this way a little bit and I wanted to sit on here so I can figure out mounts because this this plate right here is off of the original bed so I'm hoping I can use it that's sitting right there this needs to come over if there's enough room there's a hole in the frame there I could put a bolt in be done I mean that's all that holds these things down is like four bolts all right trying to hold the camera level the bed looks like it's the same level as the truck for me looking at it. I mean it just it sits really high in the back but I think that's just the way it sits because it always sat high in the back but I can show you in here how I that's where I had to cut out for this. I was like, yeah, we can see that mark. Sounds like right here hitting on it. I said, I'll just cut a big hole so I can have plenty of wiggle room. I might, when I fix this back in, kind of make it tighter to that. But here's what I'm saying. This old box came out right here and it would hit that, but it's not a big deal. Same, the back I got it right. I, I was like a half inch off on the front. Yeah, the back is perfect back here. I went a little bit farther. Held it. I thought I held the front a little farther, but I must have held it a little too short. I didn't want to paint this bed, but there's a lot of holes where they had stuff screwed to it. Like here, I want to weld all these holes up. And same with the top. There's a bunch of bolt holes up here that I want to weld up. So I'm doing all that. It might get a coat of paint. Okay, ended up, got the bed squared up and running, basically squared up side to side on the frame and I welded some tabs there, that way it'll stay there. I got all the mounting holes marked out on the bottom, so now I'm just kinda working on the bed. Right now I wanna cut out for the fuel field cause it was back here on this one and it's gonna be up here and I spent the better part of the other day welding up all the little holes and they had a bunch up here where things are mounted so got a got some body work to do there but yeah I want to go ahead and get this cut out and get that fuel filler neck mounted there and see if my little hose here is long enough to reach which I think it is so let's get to doing that let's see what this will do
I started wearing uh, these dust masks, and that right there is why I'm doing a bunch of grinding and stuff, because all that dust and rust particles stuff would all be in your lungs at that cot right there. So. Okay, I've done a little work off camera to this. Just working on it on when I get off work, so it's kind of piddling. Um, I I decided them seams down through there. I welded them solid all the way down both sides, and today I just put some uh, body filler on there. So I think that'll look a lot better as one continuous seam versus it'll have them lines. It won't look like this panel was an afterthought like most do. So gotta do a lot of sand on that, but. I'm going to work on getting this bumper mounted on here. So I'm going to try and have it set. The original bumper was right here on this bed, right where the slip is. And I'm going to try and lower this one to about even with this hitch. That way you don't have to put your leg up as high to get up there. So I'm going to work on doing that. Right, it's been a couple days. I think we left off. I was fabbing up the rear bumper, which is sitting over there. And I got it done. I went ahead, I cut these holes here for reverse lights because I'm going to have two brake and turn signals. And then I ordered some LED lights for reverse lights. So I got them holes cut and, and drilled so those can be mounted up. I got the body work done on the seams here. I welded them solid, that way that'll just look like one panel. This is really smooth. It may not look smooth, but it's smooth. There's a, I think right here, there's gonna be a high spot that's gonna show. And whatever that is, that'll show in the paint. But other than that, it's, it's really smooth. There's a couple, over here is about perfect. Um, 
yeah, doing body work. Your eyes can deceive you. Your hand, and you can even put like a little towel or something under your hand and rub across. And anything you feel will show up in the paint. Like, for some reason, that's high right there, but I ain't worried about it. That's pretty good. So, like this dent in this door, that's too much. If you put filler in that where this is constantly slammed, it'll break and fall out. These, where they had them little signs mounted, I put a little bit of putty in these. So I need to sand that down just to fill in some imperfections where I welded it. No big deal. But I went ahead, I got all these welded up where I had to cut out for that spring purge. So I got this all boxed in and welded up nice. I made new brackets. These were gone. Only one of them had it for these little springs that hold it. I like that a lot better than the gas shock. There's really nothing to go bad there, I guess, if the spring breaks. But I welded up right here. Shit, yeah. Every one of these on both sides had cracks right here. Just welded that up. I need to grind them down. I actually forgot about that. But every one of them had cracks in both spots there. This door, I need to get me a slide hammer so I can weld on here and try and pull this out as much as possible. I'm not too awfully concerned. I mean, the dent gives it some character, like these little things. I might put some putty in them. Probably not, because this whole door is kind of mangled. So, it gives it character. But it's got that piece welded up in there. Um, same thing on this side. I filled in these seams here. So this one kind of goes this way. So I got two different angles coming right up through here, this way and flat. That's what it is. This one's all flat all the way down. That's nice. That's high right there. Whatever. They had a screw or something there. Ain't worried about it. This one is the only one I have left to do a little more fab work to. So, I made this. You can see this little receiver back in there. Because I wanted a box to keep my winch in. Here's the winch right here. It's got the receiver on the end of it. So I can use it on whatever. So that actually fits in this box nicely with that receiver in there. I gotta weld up some plate and then make some little things. That way water doesn't come in back here and whatnot. Although I might do that with the bed off and upside down. It'd be a lot easier to work on. So I added that in here. I also added I had some of these chunks of steel here. And basically, the only spot this front, this bed sits on the frame is in the back. You can see that angle. And then the very front, that lip, sits on the frame there. Which is how it's designed. But I figure it would be better since I had some of these blocks of metal. I just set them under here and they are just tack welded on. But I've done these two on both sides. So if I set something real heavy in the bed, that, there's no flex in the bed. It's sitting right on the frame. I'm also on these ones both sides going to drill and tap and put bolts in here to give it some extra mounting support because it was just two U-bolts in the front and then two bolts in the back is all it holds this thing on here. This old bed here where I had this nice sliding cover, I had, you can see this hole right there, I had that little piece of square stock welded in there so I'd keep the winch in here because it was under cover and you keep it locked. But the new bed, I don't have this, which was a nice feature. I like that, but this bed is just trashed. You can see, like, see all this rust? Like, people say you can fix that. Yeah, with a new bed. It's junk, but I got it sitting here in case I need, need stuff off of it. Don't sound like I've done a whole lot, but I have spent two 10 hour days on working on all this stuff especially welding in all them boxes and whatnot so and it's nice i didn't really this one here was reset in so i didn't even notice that but i cut this one out for no reason so i just welded it back in where it was so i still got plenty of room in all my boxes i got an extra foot of bed space yeah, so other than flipping it upside down 
and working on it, we are pretty much ready to set this bed off. And while it's upside down, I want to clean up the bottom and we're just gonna paint it with some tractor paint. We're gonna do the bottom and this front part right here just with black tractor paint. And then the two sides in the back, I'm gonna get paint match white. That way it matches the cab because if it's not the same color white, then what's the point in making it white? And then the top here, the sides and the bottom, we're going to do this in that uh, roll-on truck bed liner. So that's what I'm going to do there. I also drilled holes to mount the tailgate on here. And now that I'm done talking, we pretty much ready to set this thing off. So I don't have time to do that today, and I also need the weather to cooperate. I need to set it off so I can get everything welded and finish that up. We'll be we'll be ready to start painting on this thing. So my plan is paint the bottom and the front. Then we're going to put the bed back on the truck and actually paint the bed on the truck. My plan. I also need it off to fix up this front bar here that kind of got mangled taking it off that was that was my fault but that is the plan so we're getting really close and this bed should only come off and on one more time I don't know if I showed you but I welded in the little piece right there on the front and back corner so it lines me up center to center as far as side to side is that way taking it on and off should be a lot easier now yeah yeah these are some thick I think these are like inch and a half thick chunks of steel so I'm gonna thread and tap bolts in that there's a hole in the frame already I didn't want to drill holes in the frame so there's already a hole right there so I marked it out so while it's off I can drill that I also need to drill the rear mount I got the pilot hole put in it so yep nothing more than do some drilling and tapping. Cabin chassis bed on a eight foot pickup body is a lot of work. But being that I sold all the parts off of this truck that I made money at it and I still have the bed. So it's kind of worth doing. Plus it's not rusted out. So on the inside of this, I want to put some kind of liner in here because these pieces of C-channel hold mud and salt and whatever else and cause that to rot. This piece of conveyor mat was laying in the back of the truck as like a slip mat. I don't want to put it back in there. But I figure if I cut out some sections, I can make some nice wheel well liners with it. And honestly, I probably just bolt it to the box and just follow it around. Bolt it, maybe even bend it around under here just to try and not give stuff a place to sit so I can get as many years as possible out of this bed. But anyways, I'm done talking. We'll come back whenever it's time to pull this thing off. And... Alright guys, uh, I'm going to end this video right here. This I was editing it last night and this video is getting really long. So, we'll leave part two for all the painting and yeah, that's pretty much it. Paint it, bolt it together. There's a tiny bit more fab work but not much so we're gonna leave this right here I think this is a good stopping point um, if you're wondering yes a cabin chassis bed can fit on a 8 foot pickup bed but it is a lot of work I probably wouldn't recommend it unless you get it for free so that's all for this one um, we're kinda that time of year where the weather is kinda iffy so I gotta paint it outside so I'm wanting the weather to cooperate. So it could be a week or it could be a month before I get it done. But yeah, anyways, y'all have a good day and uh, we'll see you in the next one.